Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to cover the topic of process capability ratio or CP. Let's understand the specifications first of all. Suppose we have a customer and the customer approaches us with his requirements. And as the customer is knowledgeable, his requirements are not vague, but he has certain specifications in mind. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose our customer is the International Tennis Federation or the ITF. You're working for a supplier of sports equipment. So they approach you with a requirement, which is an order of tennis balls. As a supplier of the tennis balls, you need to understand the requirements of your customer. And one of the critical requirements is the diameter of the ball. So they give you specifications that the tennis ball should range anywhere between 6.56 to 6.86 centimeter in terms of diameter. Let's understand this a little better. So let's say the red line that you see here represents the diameters. Now we have an LSL or the lower specification limit, which has been given to us by the customer, which is 6.56. Likewise, we have a USL or the upper specification limit given by the customer, which is 6.86. We need to understand that as long as we stay within the specification limits, our product is going to get accepted. But if we go beyond the specification limits on either side, whether it's beyond USL or below LSL, it's going to get rejected. So if we are operating a process represented by this yellow line, which extends beyond the specification limits, we are incurring some loss as there is an acceptance region that's defined only between the lower and upper specification limits. Whatever goes beyond is going to get rejected. So what is an ideal state to be in? Well, the first and the foremost ideal state would be to stay right within the specification limits. Now let's understand the process capability ratio. A process capability ratio by definition is a ratio of a specification width, which is provided by the customer, divided by the process width, which is our capability to deliver. It is nothing but the ratio of upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit divided by six sigma. So let's say we have a process capability ratio of one. What does it mean? If you look at the picture, this entire process width, which is equal to the specification width in this case, is equal to six sigma, which means we can go three sigma above the mean and three sigma below the mean. And in this case, we're assuming a centered process. What happens when the CP value is less than one? Well, as we can see in this case, the USL minus LSL or the specification width must be less than the denominator, which is six sigma. It means we have defects in the process. We are going beyond the specification limits. We are incurring waste. What about a CP value of greater than one? Well, it means that we are operating well within the specification limits. We are pretty much under control and we are not even touching the boundaries as we were doing in case of CP is equal to one. So what is a more capable process? So of course, a process that stays well within the specification limits is a far more capable process. We touched upon the concept of process capability in short, when we were talking about Six Sigma, the first introduction video. On that note, let me ask you a question. What do you think should be the CP value for a Six Sigma process? Think about it. It's, it's important to understand that when we talk about a process in terms of sigma level, it is on both sides of the mean, not just the overall width. So a six sigma process has a total width of 12 sigma. Therefore, the numerator in our case, USL minus LSL becomes 12 sigma divided by six sigma, which comes out to be two. This is the first video, an introduction to process capability. In our subsequent videos, we are going to talk about the opportunities that lie with this kind of capability computation. Thank you.